All right, I think we are live now. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Konnichiwa. Konbanwa. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that works Nani? totally. Nani? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is Saturday night. It's time for the weekly dig. Uh, for anyone new to the stream, this is a live show. We dig into anime, old and new. I'm Brent. These are my amazing co hosts, John. Say hi, John. Hi, John. And Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hola, Esteban. There we go. Esteban. <laughs> oh, boy. That's flashbacks to Mysterious Cities of Gold. Um. <laughs> We'll start our dig tonight by analyzing, oh, Serial Experiments Lane, episodes oh one through four. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we're going to do it. Um, we are going to go in and dig in to um, a series that I know a lot of folks are familiar with um, uh, on this channel, because I've done a couple videos about it, um, and... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. Just first four four episodes. We're actually going DVD by DVD. So if you have the old DVD releases of, of Lane, episodes one to four, and then three episodes through. So we're gonna start there and dig into this show. And boy, is it a show! Um, I have my notes, um, lots of them. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about stuff. And are you going to issue the warning about, like, this could cause you know, crater explosions <laughs> or anything like that? Lane is a really <clears throat> weird show. So mm. be ready for that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot happens mm -hmm. here. Content warning. Um, this show deals with uh, people taking their own lives. It deals yep. with um, psychological issues, people having psychological mm -hmm. problems. Um, it deals with addiction. Um, it deals with, um, um, I would say, depression, um, without sort of uh, um, going too deep on that. Um, or, you know, not, not diagnosing it per se. Um, so, uh, first off, I want to know from you all what is your uh, exposure to Lane? I want to know this from the group itself. So, I'm throwing up a poll in YouTube. Um, would love oh. to see if anyone um, uh, wants to talk about that one. And so my question is, uh, John, what is your exposure to Lane before this? Well, first of all, let me say, that's amazing. Where did you find that poll? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's a feature of YouTube that I've just never seen before. That's yeah. cool. Okay. Um, you uh, have a video that's ancient mm -hmm. about Lane. Yep. Uh, we've talked about Lane. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Lane at cons post panels. Mm -hmm. So finally, gosh, what, like three, four years ago? Okay. I sat down. I was like, okay, <clears throat> it's a great Saturday. I'm feeling peppy. That's oh, good. Let's just settle on into it. Oh, good oh, night. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, here's your mood killer. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, uh, I took an entire day. Two, actually, two days. It was Saturday, Sunday, and I watched through the mm, whole thing. Wow. And I was just like, Holy, what, <laughs> what is going on in the show? Mm -hmm. So that was my exposure to Lane, and now this okay. is the second time through. Okay, cool, so. cool. Steve, how about yourself? Um, first time, totally okay. new to this. Uh, nice. You know, I've been aware of it. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen sure. clips here and there, but really never watched it. Um, and I am, uh, I love it, by mm -hmm. the way, so far. Good. And, cool. uh, it's and I'm very surprised that that's this is something that I have not started watching back when it came out, mm. and I'm not sure why my radar missed it, because sure. uh, it's totally up my alley. Mm. Um, but I will say that the people in my apartment building were probably hearing, and that was my head hitting the <laughs> the desk as I'm watching. It's quite, it's great, but I don't understand. And so much it was like, <laughs> so much was creeping me out. But it was really great. Um, I knew I was in for a ride when the, when it opens up and goes, um, present day, ha, 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 present, present time. time. Yeah. Ah. It's just like going, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Like nails on a blackboard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the poll. Um, everybody responded that they have seen it um, several times. 
So this is a wow. popular, popular show with the chat. That's awesome. Um, Matt, I have read the fan fiction where Major Kusanagi is dealing with problems with, like, computer stuff and discovers it's actually Lane. Um, oh. Like, like a, 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 a future, like, version of Lane in the internet. And they, they have a conversation in this fan fiction. It is, it works! Oddly enough, it, it actually works. Um, I'm not sure it's it psychologically right <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely, as we like to say, a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is, I think, my fourth watching of Lane. Um, wow. At least. I see it once um, before, once with my mom, oddly enough. Um, and then rewatched it a while back when I was doing all those videos about the show. Uh, and then here, um, uh, you know, yet again. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, pretty remarkable show. Um, so um, I actually have another uh, question just for the group because a lot of folks said they've seen Lane. Um, so I want to want to know, and this is not a question for um, uh, uh, for my fabulous co-host, but I'm just curious if if you folks think. Um, does Lane make sense to you, or is it just like a fever dream? Like, does it seem just completely, you know, um, uh, arbitrary, if you will? I'm not allowed to answer? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we'll be talking about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, we'll go through the theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I hear that, and man, the premise never really interested you. Yeah, and... and Lane, and let's start there. Lane is a very unique show. Um, it's very experimental. It's very artsy in its presentation and its visual style and so forth. So it is, this is not One Piece. This is not, you know, Naruto. This, this is not easily consumable anime that kind of comes, uh, comes together. Um, and that is and just kind of an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, um, I was going to point out, um, yes, Lane has a video game. I've been playing it uh, over on the Twitch uh, uh, side. That's a whole thing we can talk about. But um, um, I was lucky enough back in 2001 to go to Otakon um, where the, the entire con was themed around Serial Experiments Lane. They got the creator, the... I got Yuki Ueda, they got the character designer, um, Hishoshi Abe, they got um, the, the, the band that did the opening theme song were there. Um, wow. So yeah, a whole, whole bunch of folks. And um, I, I went to a panel with, with the creators and folks were like, so I have this theory, is this correct? I have this theory, is this, this correct? And they said in that panel, um, the creative staff all agreed that we would all come up with our version of events that kind of explains what's going on so we would all understand it and be able to make it. But that we would allow any interpretation of a lane to be valid. We're not going to sit here and say, you know, that your interpretation of the show is wrong. Whatever interpretation you come up with is fine by us. We don't want to get into, you know, the nitty gritty of are you right or are you wrong. It's kind of uh, counterproductive. So from this perspective, we're going to talk about all sorts of things about Lane. And it's one of the fun things about the show is you can just kind of go anywhere. You can kind of start making connections and start figuring things out and start seeing why, where things are going without worrying about whether you're getting it right or not. Um, again, I have a theory which I will be advising or, 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 or aiming towards. Um, but that is just, you know, um, the way Lane is, is that there are lots of different ways of kind of assembling the different pieces. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll, see where that ended up. I'm quite curious. Um, <laughs> most people said, I don't know anymore. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. And then um, it makes sense. It's all a fever dream or, hey, maybe if I squint. Uh, each got 20% of the vote. So fair enough. Good to know. Um, all around, so that is fine. Um, so let's talk about the show. Uh, this is a show that begins in a very unusual way. Um, it begins literally 
with the main character looking at you out of the television screen. Um, and lest we forget, you know, this is what a CRT screen with, you know, distortion would look like. Yeah. Um, and so this is a message, right? This is a this is a show that is messing around with what anime is, uh, with audience and, and all all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you jump into this really interesting opening credit sequence with all this imagery being thrown at you. Yeah. Um, well, that, when that first image made me think too, it's like I just recently got rid of a twenty-year-old television, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it had been on Cartoon Network so much that burned into a corner of the screen. Wow! The <laughs> <laughs> That's like that was the TV yeah. that, I, that the dogs had mm-hmm. for them to keep oh. them company when I wasn't home. So seeing that first image, I was like. Oh, geez, that's like lanes burned into the mm-hmm. after image of the television. Yes. Like CRT. I'm like, ah, and, <laughs> and And again, that is a an intentional sim- symbol of the show. Um, uh, and then you get this iconic opening credit sequence um, with all the stuff going on. And a few things I want to mention about this. Um, one is, um, A, it seems to be interrupting your own broadcast. It does seem a little bit like a pirate signal coming in. <laughs> Um, also, room on board. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, what what is the opening line of the theme song? Anyone pick that up? And you don't seem to understand. Like, there's an interesting first line. <laughs> This is going to be hard to understand. Yeah, that kind of characterizes what happens for the rest of the series. Like, ah, here we go. Yeah. Um, And you get all these images of which, as you get into the show, you realize, oh, that's what they're kind of talking about. Of all of these characters standing around watching Lane on television. Um, Which is very odd. Um, And even further, you get this kid on the floor playing some kind of like VR game with Lane on the television, but clearly, like, he's not playing a game with Lane in it. Yeah, he's not seeing her. So there's some weird disconnect going on there. Um, So they're giving you a lot of of, of information. Uh, By the way, we will see this kid again. Um, Oh, good. Yeah. Um, And then, uh, and you start getting this dichotomy. So one thing I want to point out here without kind of leading one down the garden path. Um, you'll notice that there are two different kinds of shots in the opening credit sequence. Um, there are these very um, fuzzy shots um, with a lot of imagery going along um, and shots of Lane looking very self-confident, apparently nude, um, or at least you know no clothes obviously on her, but like yelling at you, basically, from the screen. And then those are contrasted by these other shots of Lane walking around in a very real-world environment. Um, and personality is different. Like it's, These are very different things going on here. Um, and then Lane crosses the crosswalk, which I know when I first saw that, I was like, oh, how, what an interesting visual thing for, for them to do. How, what, what an odd kind of artistic or, or architectural thing. No, this is in Japan everywhere. Like, th- these are just ubiquitous. Um, but then she sees the crow um, freeze in midair, um, um, which is, again, sort of one of these iconic moments in the show um, uh, as the, the cat uh, flies off her. Uh, and then she walks away with the cap in, in midair. Yeah. Um, which again? At which point? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say at which point I was just like it, I saw that I was just like oh hey wait a minute the screen. <laughs> no, and then tapping yeah. my screen and going like, oh no oh no. Oh, <laughs> Not a mistake. Um, uh, a friend of mine um, he said when the hat flies off and she sees that crow that's when he became an anime fan. Huh. That moment where he was like, oh, this is not your typical cartoon. Like, stuff's yeah. going on here. Uh, and then Lane is staring at you. I am not sure. We'll have to find out later. Uh, there is a shot in Lane later on that is animated by the character designer. Um, he was not a... An, uh, so, Yoshoshi Abe, the character designer of this, was hired to do this show because they just liked his art. 
um, yeah. in, in the, the game initially as well. Um, but he had no idea how to character design. Um, he was not an animator. He was not involved in the process or so forth. So they asked him to kind of create this character. So he literally filled a sketchbook with sketches of Lane, this character, and then sent that in. And they're like, thank you very much. Um, and he later found out that they then handed that off to somebody who actually made, like, TV-style wow. character designs out of that. But they just wanted that artistic style. In fact, I was, again, at a panel with him and um, the character designer of Utna. Um, yeah. Wow. And, uh, oh, boy. And, <laughs> and, and they asked him, how do you create characters? And Utna's character designer um, was saying, well, so... I sit down and then I, I stylize the character to make sure it fits well on TV and I do it from these different angles and Abe goes, I literally had no idea how that worked until just now. And I literally just mailed in a sketchbook. <laughs> that was my process. <laughs> okay. Um, but they, uh, the, the creator said they, they wanted Abe to have something in the show, to actually have a piece of himself in the show. Um, and so there is a shot of Lane staring at you. I mean, it's later on, but this may be from it as well. Um, that he actually animated himself just to kind of put a little bit of himself in the show. So that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, so then we start with a bunch of different imagery. Um, and again, not to get too crazy here, but one of the first pieces of imagery, <laughs> we can go deep. Um, yes, we can. It's literally a stop sign, um, and it's telling us to stop. I think this this image is very deliberate of saying, okay, everybody, you know this is an anime now. Hold on. Pay attention. <laughs> uh, focus. Things are going to get weird. Um, uh, yeah. Your hands inside the car yeah. all the time. <laughs> and so we, go, we come to this very non-anime spot, a back alley in, like, Rapongi or some, like, very seedy part of the city. Harajuku. Har yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, of the Demon City. Um, and you get uh, uh, this, this girl with glasses. Um, what's interesting looking back on it is how she's out of breath. Like she's been running. And I don't know why, honestly. Um, I don't know what she's been running from. Because uh, there's nothing in the show to indicate why she would be doing that. Because it's not like she's just scared. It's like right. she has been running from things. Again, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there. Well, I think if you cast it forward, she, mm -hmm. it, it seems more like she is literally running from herself. Uh, fair point. Yep, yep, yep. Because if you think about the dialogue that comes later, mm -hmm. where she's yeah. talking to Lane, True. it's kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, she's she's running to to what occurs. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, so. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you say that the actual movement because when I saw that, what what I intro, what I saw was not her out of breath because she was running, but mm -hmm. rather that she was panicking, she was having mm -hmm. a meltdown, and mm -hmm. that there was some type of mental crisis happening at that moment. Mm -hmm. And then as we move forward, suddenly it resolves itself. Fair. So there's like it, I thought you know kind of a little bit to your point, John. Yeah. That there was some type of like mental fight going on and, and like in the, in, in, and it comes out physically as just like yeah I can't and, catch my breath I can't you know whatever and you're probably right just this time watching it I was like it seems like she's out of breath but it that makes more sense um and we see I, I love these just random girls who are like ha 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 she's throwing up and just sort of walk off it's like right yeah. thank you you know ah uh, the humanity <laughs> <laughs> thank you for caring uh, Thank you for caring. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was it was particularly interesting. Is a lot of shows, you know, you have callous people around or mm. people who just ignore things. But you know, a lot of shows you do have the person who walks over is like Daijou, you know, mm -hmm. are you okay? Yeah. And it's like, no, you guys took a particular stance on this where she's having a crisis of some sort, and people are just callously indifferent mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. It's like no question or you need help, no question you need a police officer. Nah, mm -hmm. just <laughs> <laughs> and, like And it's one of the things about the show is that yeah, this is very much about real people dealing with sort yeah. of real issues. It's not here comes the hero, here is the villain, right? It's just people yeah. right. doing their thing. This is also where we first see these wonderful splotchy shadows that are so unique to Lane. Yeah. Um, the fact that these and obviously look at blood specs. Um, but in other shots, they look more just like they're, they're stylized, you know, they're obviously like paint spatters, 
Um, or uh, Demon I, or <laughs> And that's the thing. It's like mm -hmm. I kept looking the second time around, looking at this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is like the 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 border between reality yes. and yes. like an right. altered Lots dimension. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like we're seeing. We're seeing like along the sort of surface of it, mm -hmm. where the where the real world is, and then anywhere off mm -hmm. of that plane is this yep. other dimension. I'm like, ah, oh, dude, stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and meanwhile, in the background, mm -hmm. yeah, that that I'm ever present the... buzz. Um, uh, you guys have seen my my photos of uh, of my Japan trip. Um, where I would just take photos of like that, <laughs> of like just power lines, because like, oh yeah, that's exactly what it looks like in Japan. Um, and by the way, one of the things uh, in Japan, um, very little power was actually put under this uh, underground. It was almost all just strung up in wires uh, for a variety of reasons. But this is like a very common thing that just everything is is out there invisible. Is it easier to fix from an earthquake versus like having the ground? No, saying. apparently it's just like it's cheap, and so yeah. we just do it that way. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we get again, <laughs> not typical anime: a guy walking home with a very accommodating lady, um, yes. mm -hmm. uh, who I'm sure they're gonna have a good time. Um, and then we get again this sort of iconic image of. Uh, Chisa first unbinding her hair. There's a sign. Um, and then she says something. And I deeply appreciate the fact that there is no audio here in any of the tracks. Yeah. They just animate with flaps. That's all you see. <laughs> so there's no way for us to ever know what she said. Um, but... Look, Mom, I can fly. Yeah, exactly. No, no. <laughs> no, sure, uh, not, not, you not quite. Gravity. <laughs> um, yeah. But she's holding out her glasses. And this is the first time I kind of realized what's going on here. Is that the glasses represent her frail self. Um, th those are her limitations that she's sort of pushing out beyond herself. Thinking, I, don't need, I won't need these anymore. I won't need this, this, this imperfect, imperfect part of myself. Um, I can kind of, you know, I can leave this behind. Um, and then she does that. Um, and her hand holding on there represents the rail self. Ah, <laughs> um, just, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This that would I now. Where did you? Is this interpretation or is this? Did they say something about that in the panel? Interpretation. Because I was trying to figure yeah, out. Interpretation. Like, Why is she holding that out? Yeah. No, I, they, they did not say. But I'm, I'm assuming that's what okay. that that means. Okay. Um, or that she's perfected in what she's about to do. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. limitations of you know eye problems. Exactly. Matter. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's like going someplace where these won't be won't be relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. Could also be she's trying a different perspective. Like this is a, a new way of seeing the world, and so she's kind Ooh. of looking out that way. Ooh. Okay. Um, gotcha. That definitely works. Um, and then she lets go, um, and down she goes. Figuratively and literally. literally. Yes. Uh, and you get this. I, I get, what passes for comedy in Lane is that she hits the ground, all that happens, and then the sign just dunk. Like, well, oh. she hits the sign. Yeah, she literally mm -hmm. walks it on the way down. Yeah, and then yeah. it's yeah, that was there. It's a hard moment not to kind of chuckle. Yeah, at the same yeah. time you're just kind of like horrified. Oh. What's going on? Like uh, uh -huh. uh. Right. It's like it's like well, they showed a shot of her, you know, nose diving. Yeah. And and mm. you know it's going down. And you're like, oh, okay, here we go. And it cuts away to the the, the amorous couple. Yeah. And then you hear the chunk and mm. and then people yeah. going, but you don't really hear screams. You hear people going, what the hell is that? Yeah, exactly. And it's just mm -hmm. like, what was that? I don't know. What, what's going on here? And then the thing falls off. Yeah. <laughs> you have the chuckle, and then you know you see the hand of the blood, and mm. then and like people just like reacting to it, going, I, I'm you know I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's basically, it has nothing to do with me. I, I, I right. you know, I yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at. Okay, this doesn't concern me. I'm gonna walk away from this. And yeah. the Amherst couple is just like, they, they're looking at it as they're confused and they're like going, you know, you know. To me, it's almost like it's like, like they're thinking, um, should I be horrified because I'm kind of feeling that way right now? Right. I, I want to go to the Love Hotel. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and which I mean, arguably for the neighborhood that it's in. This is horrifying, but it's probably 
it seems not, like kind of a not rough exceedingly rare where people are well a rough neighborhood where even if it is rare mm. they don't want to be involved uh, that's true you know, yeah good like, point if there's mm -hmm. something seedy yeah. going on yeah. these people are not going to want to be the ones to be like mm -hmm. yeah let me walk into the police box <laughs> yeah. and like, hi i know you got a warrant out for me but i just saw something you're like no i did not say it. this i was not here <laughs> uh, um, can i have your name for the police report <laughs> john doe <laughs> exactly and then we pan up again and you know to, to her school bag and the little uh, charm hang off it. Um, again, just to kind of for, for the, the series to go, no, this isn't funny. Like, this, is, this, this is a tragedy. Like, the, things are happening here. Uh, and to be, to be clear, uh, Japan was facing a spate of teen suicides in the 90s. Um, yeah. This was definitely a problem that they, were, that they were kind of struggling with as a society. What was going on? What was causing all this? Um... And then you get more of these uh, these these shots. So we get Lane finally shows up, walking out of her house. Yeah. Um, and what's fascinating about this, and again, kind of going back to some of the weird things we talked about before, is that um, there's almost nothing physical in this shot. There's Lane, and there are these weird shadows, and then just this bleached sun. Um, and if you want any more indication that, you know, Lane is in the nexus of a lot of weird things happening, I think this is one of the shots. Yeah, because Lane's not bleached out. No. Nope. nope. It's like everything else is like there's an atomic bomb going on. <laughs> super, super bleached out. Yep. And yet, everything with her is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's just walking to school. Okay. Um, and more of these wonderful splotchy shadows. Uh, and they did say in the panel that these shadows were meant to represent this unreality, this this blending of the real world and the wired, as we'd seen later. Um, and just getting that across. I think it was the director who came up with that idea of saying, we should make the, cut, the, the shadows just look really, really weird. Um, and so... It did a good job. Yeah, it absolutely. Um, and then we, we see Lane on the, on the train, and... I think our, our first kind of indication of something odd going on here, um, as she's looking out and she says, uh, you know, um, uh, it's so loud. Why don't you all just shut up? And everyone just kind of and looks up. Yeah. yeah. And it's not loud. Yeah. Like, it's well, a, it, we don't we don't hear it being loud, mm -hmm. but obviously it was. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, here's where things start to, to connect because what have we been seeing? What is she looking at? She's looking at the wires. Yeah. Right? And so clearly there's something going on there that actually she is, she's hearing something um, starting to come into to her head. Um, and then she goes to school and then she starts having her first sort of weird moments. Um, yeah. Where... The yeah, um, where her classmates start getting fuzzy, and everything gets just really weird for a little bit, um, and she's clearly having some some mental issues. Did you notice on the the teachers writing out equations and stuff? Yeah, it's, it's like math class. But if you look, it's like print parentheses, yes. C, mm -hmm. something or other. Yeah, it's sorry, all yeah. programming yeah, language. Yeah, it's Pascal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. it's not like standard geometry. Oh no. Uh, and, and, calculus. and we'll get to this later. Um, hey. In episode four, I think it was, um, Taro says, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, yeah um, uh, he says, wait, uh, what grade are you in? Oh, you're in eighth grade. Well, the schematic of those motherboards are in your eighth grade you know, textbooks. So just use that as a reference. Yeah, for, for upgrading the Navi. Yeah, so it's like, wait. Yeah. Motherboard schematics are being taught as common core, you know, to Japanese students, uh, you know, in this world. Clearly not present day, present time. Um, but it says it is present day. Ah, yeah, they, ah, <laughs> confusing. Um, but yes, this, this is the Pascal programming language. If you want to go real deep, Pascal right. is named after. Uh, Pascal is named after Blaise Pascal who has Pascal's wager around the existence of God. Right? So, again, it's a leap, but it's interesting. Um, I think this is more here just to say, you know, they're, they're teaching 
eighth graders programming in in class isn't that amazing um um but yes i i think given how it shows up i think mm. it's probably more likely the existence of god issue mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean because it's like I, there's going to be a very like small segment of people that are going to notice that it's mm -hmm. a programming language yep. there's going to be a minuscule segment of people <laughs> that's pascal yeah. and it's not in there enough in broadcast Mm -hmm. for you to do anything about it. It's right. only in this iteration that we can go back on the DVD or mm -hmm. the streaming, yep. stop it, and be like, hey. You know what I mean? So it's like, you could have just put up one plus two plus three. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's yep. definitely something deeper involved in mm -hmm. that. Um, and yes, Matt. For, um, the, uh, for those of you in chat land, if your head is already hurting, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is only episode um, one. <laughs> and, and, and Matt points out, yeah, so... Back in 1998, there was no wireless. You know, there was no wireless internet. Right. Yeah. Anything internet related would have been going over physical, physical wires, physical cables. Um, Halo well connections. Yeah, absolutely. Copper cables. Halo and discs. The, uh, the, the uh, 24 baud uh, mm -hmm. modems. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so let's look at for, for a second, just, just kind of point out what happens when Lane walks into the classroom. She just walks over to her desk, sits down, um, and she's not interacting with anyone. Um, Alice is comforting Julie or Jury, depending on your, your version. Yeah. Um, because Julie got a, an email from Chisa, the dead girl. Um, and she's kind of freaked out. And obviously Julie's a little sensitive. Um, <laughs> Reka is not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, um, Alice immediately walked right over to Lane. And is like, hey, and... and I don't think this is anything more than all the other students have filtered in. Another student has filtered in, and Alice is like, hey, do you know what's going on? Um, but you get this interesting dynamic where Alice is just very open, very pragmatic, just, hey, what's going on? No, you know, are you okay? No, you know, we haven't talked before, whatever. Um, whereas Lane is just kind of like, human talk? What? Hey, I don't... Hey, uh, I do. nah. um, yeah. She's clearly not in there. Her conversation skills are not polished, <laughs> no. one might say. I have a question for you and, and folks in chat. Um, is Lane potentially on the spectrum? I'm not sure. Um, I can see arguments for, I can see arguments against. And again, not necessarily that they intended that, but could you, could you interpret it that way? Yeah, I think you could definitely interpret it that, that she was on the spectrum, or mm. if you're, you know, it kind of depends on which which slope you're going down mm. and what theory you're kind of thinking about what might be going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's unpack what that's that sounds, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> unpack that uh, sense. Yeah. Um, so you know, like, so the current you know ski slope I'm on is, <laughs> and, and who knows, I might hit a tree <laughs> or a branch somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't Sunny Bono on us. Oh, yeah. no. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Too sorry. soon. Too sorry. soon. Too soon. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I got the shares on in my head just now. Um, anyway. <laughs> I got you, babe. <laughs> what? What? No. Um, and it, it, it's it to me, it was kind of like um, not so much as a spectrum, uh, being on the spectrum as she is not used to talking to people because she is not a person, mm -hmm. um, per mm -hmm. se. Um, yeah. And in terms of just like um, you know being a construct mm -hmm. of of sorts and being but being an independent sentient mm -hmm. construct mm -hmm. you know not, this isn't just like somebody's controlling her or something right right, right. It, it you know just her just and then mm -hmm. kind of like having to like in the first or four episodes I feel like it's a lot of it of her adapting 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 mm -hmm. yeah first data collection and, yep. yeah, yeah data mm -hmm. collection adapting. And then, but then, of course, you know, I kind of hit, the, didn't hit the tree, but the branch hit me on the way down. <laughs> when they're talking about the club scene, which we'll, grazed, we'll get to, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I grazed my head, where they show a picture of her that looks like a girl who looks like Yeah. Her. And then I'm kind of like, going, oh, no. All right, I'm going to have to read the oh, yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that. Um, well, yeah. and that's why, having seen all the way through Wayne, mm -hmm. That's an that's an interesting perspective because at the mm. time watching it and, and even this time mm -hmm. I suspended what my thought was okay. of her general mm -hmm. uh, mental state mm -hmm. because I was trying to wrap my mind around everything else that was happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
so that it it was more like okay, welcome to the NHK. She could be a Hikikomori. Hikikomori. Right. True. There's, yeah. There's yeah, a, yeah. There's a good solid chance, and then mm -hmm. she's you know she's socially functional, but she's mm -hmm. not you know gregarious by yeah. Any <laughs> yeah. Um, and that she's not entirely you know entirely isolated, but mm -hmm. she just. She's comfortable where she is, yeah, and she doesn't need to interact with other people. And then the world starts to revolve a little bit more where she has to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like that's interesting to now that you yeah. said that. It's like, hmm, I, I still don't know because yeah. I don't know. I know what happens by the end. Mm -hmm. but it's like, geez, yeah, I don't. Mm, wow. Yeah. You know, I never thought of that. Yeah. And and I agree. I don't. I don't think I would classify her as being on the spectrum or spectrums, depending on how you define it. Um, she, just very shy, um, yeah, just very introverted and so forth. But I think you, you could, you know, it would be interesting to kind of go back through and kind of collect data on that, and kind of look at it from that lens. Yeah. Um, but interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, definitely quiet. Um, and Lane has no idea what's going on. I have to, to say, I had a friend once, the friend who became a, a fan through this, and I tried contacting him once, uh, uh, like over the course of a week, and he wasn't returning his calls. Um, so finally, I left a voicemail for him. I queued up this episode of Lane and uh, left a voicemail with my phone set up um, to Alice going, you really should check your email at least once a day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he called me back and was like, good, that is nice. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so, so we're trying to get this, the, the personality. So. One thing to note, uh, so Lane starts having some issues here. Note she has not written a dang thing in her notebook. Yeah. Um, she's just really um, spacing out at this point. Um, and she has this moment where this smoke comes out of her hand. So, during this panel um, at Otakon, one of, the, one of the panelists said, or one of the audience members said, I've been doing some research, and apparently if somebody is... Um, Dying, and I mean that, like you know, they're they're losing oxygen, whatever. They they might come back, but you know, their brain is is afraid they're dying. They'll they'll often have what's called a death dream. So they'll they'll have you know, the brain will just sort of throw all of this data at them, and they'll have this this very intense experience. And one of the things they often report is this image of smoke coming out of their hands, or their fingers. Um, this imagery connects right to that, and so she said. Is that what's going on here? Is the entire series just Lane's death dream? Uh, and the creator said, if you think that, that is up to you, and that is totally a valid interpretation. We're not going to say you're wrong. Um. <laughs> and that's when you just, like, your hand just kind of goes up towards the creator. Exactly. Go, no, I need closure. Listen, don't make me come up there and slap you. Exactly. Like um, but if nothing else, this is definitely... Um, telling us that Lane is having difficulty uh, connecting with the real world. Um, that's what I, you know, I yeah. wrote down that uh, Lane's finger smoke, which is my interpretation, as the first concrete stages of her delusional state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was, that's again, just sure, I was watching sure, this sure. being yeah. like, you know, this is the first sort of like oddly lane specific thing mm. going on that mm. she's kind of like huh and then we're all going what all right so mm -hmm. um now so, good when i was kind of watching it and you know that that and so many other things uh <laughs> that happened and i just kind of my my thought process was basically just like like i didn't know about the the, the death trends mm. or any of this stuff and you know my mind trying to, to understand why there's smoke coming out and mm -hmm. clearly there's a disconnect and mm -hmm. and and my disconnection would manifest in myself and just going uh <laughs> yeah. no, no. Mm -hmm. and this is you know this is the point when you're as a first-time watcher by the way for those of you who so many of you have already seen this but mm -hmm. for, as a first-time watcher this is one of the things where it's just like this is, this is the moment this is actually the moment mm -hmm. that i said to myself <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot here. Um, yes, there is. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so Lane goes back home, um, and we get to see her family life. 
Oof. Yeah. Um, and this is something that actually um, I did not notice the first time I watched this. Um, let's see if we could just see. Yeah. Um, we see your living room, which again bathed in this glorious afternoon light, um, which is empty and pretty freaking huge. Uh huh. And sterile. And sterile. Yeah. Absolutely. Very, very sterile. Mm hmm. Um, almost laboratory like sterile. Almost. Um, almost. <laughs> and then you you go into her room, which contains a bed, a desk, a chair, and a bunch of, of stuffed animals. No art on the wall, no nothing beyond that. Yeah, and the bed's not even like really. They, yeah, they, no. They, they've like kind of gone the compromise between a, a futon. Mm -hmm. On the floor, yeah, and a western bed by having mm -hmm. a, a <laughs> mattress and box on springs the on the floor. Mm -hmm. floor. Like, yeah, wow. So how institutional? Yeah. <laughs> so how what what got me was that like I got through all that and I was just like, okay, it's kind of a weird, you know, very mm -hmm. monochromic room. Yeah. And then, but the thing that really stood out to me was she's sitting at her desk, and finally at one point she she you know she turns the navy yeah. around. Mm hmm. It's already facing away from her. Yeah. It's already all this, and it's on the corner. It's kind of like you know she has to move mm -hmm. stuff out of the way, bring it back, and yeah, then, little and she's, stuffed animals, little, little kid kids stuff. stuff mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it, but it's turned away like she doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like where what is this? I don't want it. And but then she feels compelled, you know, of course, to use it. And then mm -hmm. you know, things happen. So let me ask you all, um, what would you know, what might this look like? Like, what would be a rational explanation for her having a uh, a room like this? To me, it looks a little bit like the room that you give a recently adopted daughter. I was thinking it looked like a room of somebody who's been institutionalized, but isn't dangerous to themselves. Mm -hmm. To me, and... Hence my going down this slope mm -hmm. was that this was something for her to fill this because the way that the father interacted with her, mm -hmm. which is very much hands off, yeah. you figure it out kind of thing mm -hmm. going, going on, and and almost as if they're watching her serial experiments, like yeah, yeah. watching her see what decisions are being made and how mm -hmm. and what what those might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's definitely not a lived-in room. No. Um, um, you know, it, it is a very, very straightforward room. And also, oddly, and again, one of those things where you don't really notice until you look at it, that everything's on one side of the room. Um, later, we see other shots, and like, this is it. <laughs> the room is empty otherwise. Everything is shoved up there. So it is very weird. Um, but it well, is, her, you know. her desk surface where she moves things mm -hmm. off is the sole lived-in space. Yep. You know, it's got, like, some stuffed animals. It's got the clock on it. It's got mm -hmm. piles of papers. It shows, like, there's been some mm -hmm. activity at a time before now. So her growing up, these are little things that are, mm -hmm. are you know, stages of development moving forward to the point we are now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her stuffed animals in the window, mm. she has apparently some on the floor between yep. the bed and the window because there's mm -hmm. shadows. The ones that are in the window are behind a shade... Mm. And at different points, they are either facing, the shade is up and they are facing into the room, mm. or they are facing outwards of the room. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's like, there's a lot of weird things going on here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm the only one seeing this, right? Definitely, definitely. <clears throat> so, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so she, she logs in, um, uh, and, and again, clearly has no idea how to use the computer. Uh, just stumbling it, stumbling her way through, but it also clearly a very advanced computer. Yeah, this is not a yeah, voice recognition. An 8088 wow. IBM yeah, right. PC. Um, <laughs> a TRS-80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a little older, but yeah. Um, uh, and then we get, and this is just before the uh, the, the commercial break. Uh, you know, yeah. User Lane has new email uh, from Chisa Yamoda. <laughs> the the. Uh, uh, the, the line is, uh, hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm dead. Okay, dead. all right. <laughs> That's an interesting opening line from a dead girl. Um, yeah, because how do you respond to that? 
I'm fine. Harry. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still alive. Thank you for asking. Right. Well, <laughs> and speaking of that, you'll note that um, Wayne actually talks back to the screen. Like, she's getting an email, and then partway through, she goes, Why did you die? Like, what are you doing? Like, she's expecting an answer from you know, yeah. in the middle of the email. That's not how that works. Um, but yeah, she she uh, she gets this email from Chisa saying, you know, I'm um, I'm dead, but I'm still alive on the other side, uh, which isn't creepy at all. Um, um, which, when this happens, one this of is us. still one of yeah. us. God, this is still years away from which. It, it was mm. funny because when I saw Lane, it made me think of stories that I the first time I'd seen Lane. Mm. Uh, stories I had seen where people had surprised their families after they had passed by like ordering stuff. Oh wow! That yeah. Would show up like a year after they had passed, or mm. to set up an email to be sent. Right. To yeah. Mm -hmm. That was like, I miss you. I love you. I'm you know, hope you guys are doing okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's funny because. I'm not entirely sure that technology was there at no, this time no. to do a delay email. I don't think so, no. You mm -hmm. know, they had internal email accounts and stuff, so I, mm -hmm. I don't discount it couldn't be possible. Right. But but I think it's highly unlikely. Yeah, no, 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 no. This was definitely not a thing back then. Um, and you get it very interesting. And so Lane goes running to talk to her parents about it. Yeah, about and that. Warm and helpful. <laughs> yeah. That wonderful, just that wonderfully painful conversation with, with or non-conversation, I should say, at the table, where they're just sitting there doing their thing. Um, sort of like two lab researchers and their assistant working with their experimental, I mean. Almost. Almost. Yeah. The sister, at least, seems to be the one that's sort of genuinely interested yeah. in what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mika definitely. Mika is the the true tragedy of this show. Um, because Mika is the one character who does not get involved, who is just dragged along with everything else and gets screwed over. Um, uh, it, it, is a, it is a real shame. But yeah, not not a lot of uh, love and attention uh, going on mom here. And, mom and dad aren't winning mom and dad of the year. No. And that's for damn sure. Um, and but, dad's watching that creepy headless... Thing, but... <laughs> so let's go there. Um, one of the things that actually... <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry. One of the things that I really appreciate about this show is that, and that really sets it apart from other shows, is the, the, the hardware actually looks like real computer parts. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just, oh, white circles that plug into other circles and make computers. Uh, I think that's a PCI card. Like that's really, really cool. Hey, that uh, guy's got a sound blaster card. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, totally. Is that a wave audio card? Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> sound blaster sixteen. Um, yeah. And so he's come home, uh, and he has uh, all of his monitors set up. And yes, by the way, that's what a CRT <laughs> monitor looks like. Uh, um, look like I got two of them, and I got two VGA super VGAs downstairs in the basement. Wow. They look exactly like yep. that. And go. they do the same thing. So when he turns it on, you hear that yep. kind of weird noise. I'm like, ah, <laughs> yep. I know that sound. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so uh, he, he immediately sets up his computer. And we get, again, not that of the year, um, yeah. as he is focused more on his computers than on his own daughter. And um, she's wearing an adorable Oh, yes. This is, this is who would not love that you know lane in the bear outfit is is one of one of the cutest things in anime let's just let's just be honest um as she's trying to talk to her father um and doesn't really happen um uh and he's just fascinated with his, with his computers now what is interesting in this in this scene is um as he's just sort of talking he does say by the way people on the real world on the wire they're connected somehow um, you should make friends on, you know, on there. It'd be good for you. I was like, oh, wow, that's it. Like, that's, that's the start of everything. Like, he is the one actually pushing her to go online and do that thing. Um, well, if you notice, when which, he's which, launching which, his, his system, he's mm -hmm. launching the ISO Surface Mapper 3D Geometry Module. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I didn't get a chance to mm. look up, but what Think Blue Count One Toe <laughs> to... Um, I didn't get a chance to look that up, but mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so we have some weird, like, funky dimensional shadows. Mm -hmm. We have some very sterile spaces. Mm -hmm. We have some really 
odd kind of things going on. And here you have somebody setting up a, for its time, fairly damn advanced rig. Yes. And he's yeah. launching a 3D mapper and mm -hmm. modeler module. Yep. Huh. Like, mm -hmm. maybe you could, I don't know, make, make an alternate reality. Or something, or something like that. Yeah. We'll get there. Run CAD and design your new house. <laughs> well, that too, but not, not, not necessarily. Um, it Josie pointed out, um, and I don't think I'll be able to find a good um, screen grab of this. Uh, once he logs in, um, no, not really. Um, uh, it's actually a bunch of Yoshoshi Abe artwork on his screen. Um, so a bunch of stuff from like his portfolio. Probably that that uh, notebook that he submitted. He probably scanned a bunch of that. So a bunch of the like, like the characters and so forth are clearly like Abe sketches that they just sort of oh, slapped onto wow. the screen. That's wow. kind of fun. Funky. Um, um, but yes, so we, we have all this going on um, as he's just but saying, oh yeah, we'll upgrade your, your Navi and we, you, you, you'll get online and you'll make friends. That is, that's a good thing to do, right? Um, Not in today's standards. Well. Back in 2001. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have the second train scene. Yay. Yeah. Um, where lanes of the train, there's a, there's a, a sudden bang. Um... And uh, the, the train operator, of course, says, we apologize for the inconvenience. The train is paused. Um, Which is code for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jelaine sees the blood on the wires. Um, yeah. And she has a bit of a freak out. Um, Lane suddenly is out in the middle of a street uh, watching people walk by. Uh, and then she's in a black void. And then she's in her room, or her, her, her house, uh, in the empty, um, uh, empty space. Um, and then she sees the wires, and then she's seeing the train and the girl. So, I think what's happening here, Lane is clearly triggered in some way by deaths going on around her. Right? Every time a death happens, like she gets weirded out and something happens. Um, and she is not watching that suicide. She is watching that person's um, um, emotional experience of the suicide. And I say that because the girl is hit by the train on the front, but the blood is traveling down the cables. Right. So her body could not have gotten up there. It was clearly a different method. Um, but she's getting a sense of what's going on with this girl, and th this girl is clearly um, um, just out of it. Like, she's just walking on... Right. I mean, when I say out of it, she's deliberately walking onto the, the train line. Like, she, she's doing this, but she's just standing there and letting it happen to her. Um, and, and, the, and again, I, it's just me. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody else. Yeah. This really was. But the pulling it forward mm. the blood on the wire mm -hmm. that's dripping down mm -hmm. that there is something about the nexus between the wired and the reality mm -hmm. there's the real blood and that's a real wire mm -hmm. but sort of kind of an indication about mm. how this interaction is yes obviously causing severe problems mm -hmm. but yeah. that's what i thought when i saw the yeah. wire with the blood mm -hmm. dripping down yeah. i'm like wow the wire it's causing real world things yes exactly right yeah. and that's what i'm getting it's like it's more than just the blood on the wire it's mm -hmm. the wired and the blood yeah. i'm like yeah oh. mm -hmm. i'm like okay. yeah yeah. But again, that's just me. No, I, just I, that's why I, I completely that. agree because that's clearly what's no, happening. No, that's why I yeah. saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, you could be more wrong. <laughs> Damn it, John! You ignorant. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, so one one thing that that I saw, or I think mm -hmm. I saw, and mm -hmm. maybe you guys can clarify this for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure that I actually saw it. <laughs> what are those shows? <laughs> she's on the train and she's looking up and I don't know if it's mm. this scene or, or mm. the first time she's on the train and the way that they make the eyes and yes, the and the things like that the pupils and, nails, and there was one particular scene where it felt like one eye was normal yes and the other yes. one was like like she was concussed mm -hmm. yeah. that was, and the other one was just, you know wide open it just kind of seemed I'm weird to me she was to looking see. 
And she was looking, you know, out at the wires. And mm-hmm. you heard the yeah. whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that okay, was so earlier I, on. I, yeah. So, but yeah, okay. I, so I, I noticed the pupil thing. I wrote mm-hmm. that down too. It's like the, the various distinct points where yeah. the pupils are tiny. There we go. And then other distinct yeah. points where their pupils are huge. And In like, fairness, Lane was made on the cheap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there are certainly points where it's like, oh, somebody just screwed up. Um, on the other hand, this we are watching the um, Blu-ray remaster of Serial Experiments Lane, where. Um, Ueda, the original um, uh, executive producer and one of the creators, uh, and the art director went back, rewatched the show, checked every shot, made notes, and went back and fixed all the animation mistakes that they could. Wow. Um, yeah, so there's all of these, a whole bunch of changes made in this. One of the reasons it looks so bloody clear um, and crisp is because they went back and they like, color corrected a bunch of the shots. And we'll talk about that later, about stuff that was very muddy to, be, um, to begin with. Um, that said, I agree. I think this looks deliberate, like there's something weird going on. Also, it should be pointed out, in this shot, the wires, wires are overlaid on Lane. Yeah, across her forehead. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and there's, there's you know, across her forehead, yep, mind, yep, mm-hmm. totally. Um, so I think that is absolutely symbolism that they're, they're throwing in there. Well, and it's certainly, too, it's like you think about the fight-or-flight response and how your mm-hmm. pupils react to things. Yep. That at the various points where her pupils are just absolutely tiny versus mm-hmm. things that are happening and her pupils are huge. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay. So we're getting some reaction out of her in some circumstances. Yep. And then in others, what you think there would be, there mm-hmm. aren't. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. mm-hmm. okay, so she responds very differently to different things than yeah. you would expect other people to respond as. Mm-hmm. I'm like, huh. Exactly. And we'll get later how uh, some of the other characters also react in ways you wouldn't quite expect. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, and then Lane wakes back up in class. Note, it's not the same class as before. So they're not just jumping back and saying, oh, that was all a dream. Yeah. Um, she's just having this, this moment uh, in English class, actually. Um, because you get to see the uh, uh, the uh, English sentences helpfully diagrammed on the chalkboard. Um, I'll see if I can find that on here. Um, uh, for those of you who, who may remember, probably no one in here can remember, uh, no one in the chat room can remember when they used to teach this. Um, you yeah, had to diagram your sentences. Yeah. Anyway. And here's um, your direct object, your indirect mm-hmm. object, your printing nominative. Um, uh, they're, 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 well, yeah, I can go to the whole, whole thing about that. I hate it. Um, <laughs> um, Terrible. I, I did dig into this. this. This does appear to just be kind of standard English teaching phrases, right? Where they're just these just sentences that you, you write down. Like, there's nothing obvious about that, nothing about mother cooking in the, in the show that I can tell. Um, it's just there because, it, you know, it, it's fodder for Lane's brain reinterpreting that into... Um, um, what was it? Um, uh, uh, come with me, I think, was the, uh, the the translation of the uh, the different words in the chalkboard. I um, well, was to say because that's actually a line from a Baudelaire uh, poem. Oh, that um, address. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, really your Google went like, very yeah. different places than my Google did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, believe it, though. I know. I'm about um, to get clubbed to death after yeah. this. <laughs> 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 like, don't make up stuff. And, <laughs> like, sorry. And you're absolutely right. We have a a, a blue shadow. Um, so as Lane is walking home, the shadows are no longer red splotches; they're blue splotches. Oh, yeah. As she's walking home. Um, so things are definitely different. And then Chiso walks by. It's like, if this episode weren't weird enough, yeah. uh, Jesus shows up. It should also be pointed out, this is something that you kind of blink and you miss it. She walks by, and then, um, and folks who are watching this, watch, watching that, that upper corner, um, Lane continues walking, and then she disappears. Yeah. Uh, she just pops out, um, because she's not quite synchronized with this reality yet. Uh, she pops back in, um, she, we have a little bit of a conversation, um, and then is this where we get... The, well, I think, the, the, I think yeah. the two where you, where Chisa shows up, mm-hmm. that's this maybe sounds too simplistic. But mm-hmm. The red splotches mm-hmm. are Lane's intersection with reality, mm-hmm. and the blue splotch of 
occurs when Chisa is intersecting with Lane's. Interesting. Lane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, let's keep on looking for that. That's that. That's a. That's an interesting um, connection. I'd, yeah. I'd I would. Have, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah, because I totally wondered. I'm like, why did it go blue? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well. Yeah, it's blue everywhere. That's true. Chisa yeah. Um, and then, so, I just want to call out when Chisa disappears, um, she glows and then, like, turns into, like, DNA. Like, we have this weird yeah, sort of ribbons out. ribbons out. Remember, they had to hand animate that. That's not a special effect. They had to draw every frame of that. Holy smokes. Um, and I say that not just to you know call attention to to effort, but also that they're they're clearly trying to say something is going on here. Like they could have just had her fade fade away, that kind of stuff. But clearly, strange things are happening here. Um, and as we see later, you know these folks who are crossing back and forth are doing so in specific ways. Um, you could have easily, like we've seen in other anime, mm -hmm. had the gust of wind, ah, yeah. hit Lane mm -hmm. in the eye, and she turns around, oh, she's not here. Yeah. No, they went with a whole <laughs> different thing. Exactly, yep. It's like, so they're making a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. Very much. Uh, whereupon we get to the end of the episode, and this to be continued with the blue and red B. That is the logo of BOS, uh, which was an alternate operating system um, spun off from Apple, way back in the day, uh, one of Apple's uh, like chief product people left Apple to um, spin up a, a whole different, whole new operating system company, um, and it lasted for five years or so as a, a, a startup, um, and eventually sort of uh, folded. Um, but that's a thing. That's that's what that is for. I don't know why all that connects into everything, but. Um, that is actually um, the logo of that company. Very odd. Interesting. Um, then we get our, our wonderful fall back asleep uh, ending credits sequence uh, with Lane just curled up uh, in her technological womb, so to speak. Um, which I'm not going to show you too much of because YouTube might get angry at me. Um, it sounds like it's Chisa who is speaking in that scene, for what it's worth. Uh, so, uh, asking. Um, let's see here. Um, thank you, Gungafago. Good to hear that. Um, oh man, yeah. The, the 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 VHS of Lane is not the way to see it. <laughs> um, wow. That, that was a very muddy transfer. It was hard to tell anything going on. That was rough. So here's the thing. Wow. Yeah. We are one hour into our analysis, and we just got to the end of episode one. Yeah, the first 23 <laughs> minutes. Woo! 13 to go. No, 13 total. Okay. So. Yeah, 12, 12, 12 to, go. to go. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We were originally going to go through episodes one through four here. Um, I'm looking at my notes. Um, are you guys good with going through episode two? And maybe stopping there? Um, or do you want to pause here? Because I have a little less to talk about with episode two. Um, but, up to you guys. I say, I just, my, my notes are all conscious stream of, uh, mm. of not divided between episode okay. one and two. Per yeah. Se. So it just goes, it just goes on. <laughs> Much like Lane. Uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, it, it, my mind just keeps going, yes. <laughs> Well, the practicality you is we have to get through this. <laughs> but it's true, yes, yes. Um, I mean, we can certainly, you know, do more of this in future. You know, we don't have to only do four, four talks. But yeah, let's at least do episode two. Everyone, everyone's calling for episode two. Let's do it. Um, let me pull up um, the video for that. Um, let me get my brain somewhere. Back there we oh, go. There we Absolutely. Go. Uh, there we are. Um... Okie doke. Cool. Uh, so, same opening. One thing Lane does not do is change its opening or its yep. uh, any of that kind of interesting stuff. Uh, and then we will jump into layer two. I believe it's friends? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, or sort of psyche? Uh, psyche is later. Psyche um, is third. Yeah, because that, that, that's where you start getting the, uh, the uh, uh, Pichuke chip. <laughs> Okay, yeah. 
Um, uh, yeah, we get a little bit of a recap in the sense that we get a lot of the same imagery from the, from the opening one in Why Aren't You Here? Um, uh, girls. That's right, layer two girls. Girls. Let's um, <laughs> <Time. laughs> um, by the way, um, the little whisper um, voice that announces the layers, episode layers and, and names. Um, that is one of the creepy enough. Yeah, um, that is a, one of the default text to speech um, uh, voices on the Mac. Um, so back in the day, it had text to speech and had a bunch of things, and that was one of the voices you could choose. And they're like, this is creepy. Let's just record all of these in this, this text to speech yeah. thing. Wow. I need to find that somehow and use that for my uh, voicemail. <laughs> Bad robotic theater. Yes, there we go. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I, I had this set to uh, to say some things uh, to me back in the day. Just you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, welcome home, Brent. No. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard. No. Um, turn on two small red LEDs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Room. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Run away. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so uh, we jump into Siberia. This is where we first get to Club Siberia. Um, and that's the club, not the location in Russia. Correct. Right. Um, or the book. <laughs> or the book. Or the book. Um, so Siberia um, was a book by, uh, I'm trying to remember, um, it, 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 was, it was also like a, a young adult um, series. Doug Rushkoff, um, published in 1994. Um, it discusses, I'm quoting Wikipedia here, many different ideas revolving around technology, drugs, and subcultures. Um, uh, talks about online culture and the idea of the global brain and Gaia theory, which Watchers of Lane may have recognized. Um, so yeah, so bits and pieces of that are, are pulled in later on in the show. Um, whereupon our, our nameless person um, gets a little something-something uh, from the, <laughs> the the woman here in the gas mask. Um, <laughs> oh, it's that kind of Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm. Cool. Great. Um, and he has his little bottle of, of root beer there, or Coke, whatever it is. Yeah, it's a distinctly um, Coke. It's just pop. Yeah, it's Coke. It's just yeah, pop. it's pop. There we go. Yeah. Um, and I love he gets this weird little pill and then cuts it open. Yeah. yeah, he pulls this razor out. You're like, ah! And he cuts it open to inspect this, and to see this tiny little spiky thing, which, as you do, you immediately put in your mouth. Yeah, because that's going to be uh, oh, Yeah. Ow. Ow. We just swallow this thing full of needles. That'll be yeah. awesome. Um, Didn't my mother tell me not to do that once? <laughs> you know, what better symbol of, of drug abuse than uh, yeah, right. than this? Um, and so he takes it, and everything slows down. I'm part um, of the speed force now. <laughs> um, and you're like, oh, that's going to be great for him. Um, and so we cut back to the humming of the wires and Lane now on her computer. Starting to understand things, starting to do things. Mika comes in, as you were mentioning. Mika's like, what the... Eh? This is weird. Um, uh, Lane's going to be late for school. Which, can't do that in Japan. No. Um, and so out she comes. You don't have an ACO to help you. Right, exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> um... And so Lane comes back out. I should point out one thing um, about Lane, because they, they, they're using the same animation. Um, from what I understand, um, the first episode of Lane was made as basically an experimental film to um, show to the production committee. Basically, the, the staff said, we want to do this, sh this show. The production committee said, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I can't conceive of this thing. So they got basically just skeleton cash to put together episode one to show back to the production committee to say, here's what the show is going to be. Um, and then uh, from that, they commissioned the rest of the, of the show. Um, so one of the reasons they, why episode... They drugged the committee. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, cool. Lane seems fine. Lane is great. All hail Lane. 
Yeah, why are you um, watching this, guys? Here, try the Kool Aid. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, so it's one of the reasons the first episode is, is kind of is a little little wonky at times. Um, unlike the rest of the show. Um, yeah. Never yet. Yeah. Wonky. yeah, and yeah. so uh, uh, she comes outside. We get our first glimpse of one of the people I affectionately call the gargoyles. Um, that was so creepy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna have to look up because uh, they name one of them, and I forget. Uh, um, well, this the blondie dude she mm-hmm. first encounters uh, for a split second when he's standing there, kind of at the pole. I'm mm-hmm. like, right? Is that Van Gogh? Oh, oh weird, yeah. Like, Go nice. look. I'm like, the madness of Van Gogh. The hair is yeah. about right. There the facial go. features are about right. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. I'll, I yeah. can't don't possibly like this. be. <laughs> like, I don't, I um, don't know. But it's, you know, given its lane, it's more than possible. Mm-hmm. Um, Wikipedia simply calls them the men in black, which is uh, quite accurate. Yeah. Um, I call them the gargoyles. That, that, is, that is a thing in, I think, Snow Crash, um, where folks go around with technology like, strapped to their heads to give them like supervision and, and super audio and so forth and so on. And so it's very much this the same idea um, you see later. Uh, so she runs away from him because, yeah, creepy stranger standing on your street. That's what you do. Yeah, like down like, from you know, your so house, like, like not even far away from your yeah. house, like, within I mean, vision probably, of your door. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and, and when he looks at you from behind the... the, the, the the column and he's just like yeah you know, yeah like that look and you're just like even god i'm over six feet and i'd be like nah, i'm just gonna walk a little bit more quickly than right. here. Yeah, have you never yeah. seen a spy film you look in the read the <laughs> newspaper right. or smoking a cigarette acting nonchalant no you're just nope. i'll hide behind this pole mm. oh but you're not <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. and again this is your your first hint that these the, the, the men in black are definitely operating under different rules um, they have a, a different remit than most of the other characters we see. Uh, so she runs off, um, and at school she then starts to talk to uh, to Alice and Julian Rayka. What was the Wolf Brigade? Jinro. What was the film? Jinro. 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 The uh, when they come up with the eye oh, gear. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And that was well. yeah. There's probably some you know visual uh, pulling there. Um, Although when it, jeez, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Rick, Rick's eyes in this shot are are, are rough. Um, but uh, yeah, there's the, the the so the animation in this shot between Lane and and, and the girls. The, the girls just kind of look like they're drawn by third graders some of the time. Um, it's just what happens sometimes during animation production. Um, and uh, uh, and Lane has a conversation with them. And they're like, oh, we, you know, we saw you at the club. Wait, no, no it's not her. She's going to be at the club. And they're like, what's going on? What's going on? And you'll notice it's not just Lane just being passive and observing. She's actually responding to their comments. Yeah. Um, but they talk about having seen Lane at Siberia, which is quite odd. Lane does not seem like very much of a clubbing girl. No. Um, For this remarkable club that has everybody from 8 to 18. Yes! <laughs> 28. It's hard to tell what the yeah, that's, are, that's but true. it's a little weird. Also, it's anime. Like, what does age even mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. What does age mean? <laughs> eight years old is the same thing as 25. Pretty exactly. much. Because um, the eight-year-old is, 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 is actually 3,000 years old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm your um, teacher. I'm only two foot tall, but I'm actually 50. <laughs> yeah. <years old. laughs> God, really? Um... <laughs> Yeah, and so obviously some, some weird stuff is happening. But Alice is being Alice and sticking up for Lane. Um, and telling them not to not to, to bug her. Um, and and off they go. Um, with this weird thing about Lane apparently being at this this club, which makes no sense. Now we get some some of the some of the classic Lane info dump. <laughs> which Lane likes to do. Uh, where they literally would just have a narrator tell you things. Um, and just sort of basically read a Wikipedia article, which is ironic because Wikipedia didn't exist yet, I don't think. Um, uh, that's interesting. Wait a second. Um, I did I just, Wikipedia. No, no. Um, you had Encarta at the time, which was right. a particularly popular no, I'm just, DVD or CD ROM set. So. On, on this screenshot, they're saying that Genentech is investigating this antibody in phase two. 
That sounds familiar. Where have I heard Genentech before? According to, to Google, well, there's multiple Genentechs. Um, the one off Wikipedia um, was founded in 2009. It sounds like, it must be from a movie or something. I, sorry, that, that's a uh, side thing. Um, but yeah, we learned that one is basically a cyber drug, um, uh, electronic uh, thing that goes into your head and um, 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 activates something in, in your brain, basically. Um, Sets off your pituitary gland or something. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's this... Hmm? Adrenal gland. Yeah. yeah, to make you feel like you're actually thinking and experiencing it faster. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, the science does, um, uh, from what I'm, I've read, does bear that out, that you can actually like accelerate your thought processes to where you are actually like processing the information much faster. You can't do it for long, um, but you can like speed up the brain temporarily. And, and like it's not that you just imagine it happening, like you are actually like processing at that speed. It's called speed. Well, yeah. Amphetamines. <laughs> <laughs> why Johnny exactly. can't yeah, exactly. Methamphetamines, they'll speed uh, you up, burn <laughs> you the hell out, and they'll speed you up. Yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, Lane's in class, and there's this uh, buzz of her cell phone. And again, 1998, 14-year-olds having cell phones. Um, well, also the fact that we're, we're at an at a very interesting, you know, tipping point. Mm -hmm. Lane has never, like, displayed any kind of cellular prowess mm -hmm. prior oh, yeah. to that moment. And yeah. all of a sudden, she's getting a phone call or a text well, message from Alice? And this is the thing, is that she see, and she looks scared for a second. Right. And I, I, I realize this time, she thinks it's coming from Chisa. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I was thinking she was just worried about getting caught. Well, yeah, yeah, and that 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 too potentially. Um, uh, but yeah, this, but yeah. Cer this certainly would make a lot more sense to be much more fearful. She <laughs> said, "Like ah, talking to the dead again, uh, yeah. the dead girl, yeah. the dead girl." Yeah. Not in class, uh, please. Just, just not in class. Uh, and then it's, it's going to haunt me. Can you make it like after school? <laughs> And you have uh, Lane's Don't little mailer. Like water bucket kits in the hall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. um, dusk maiden of amnesia. Just yeah. we'll go to the club there room. You can haunt me there. We'll have a conversation. <laughs> I'll find your skeleton in the in the basement. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah. And so uh, so Alice is inviting Lane to Siberia. Lane begs off basically, um, which is kind of interesting because it doesn't work. Um, I just love the description of Siberia from the press. It's a hip, young, it's a hip <laughs> place for young people who like computers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that so, sounds so... 1990s. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds so like something I never want to be. Um, be in. Um, but yeah. Um, and I love the graphics on their phones. It's yeah. so futuristic. Yeah. <laughs> which it is. Right. <laughs> that period of time. Totally. Have all been like gray scale, yeah. like LCD screens. It wouldn't Absolutely. Have it's a great point. Think. No. Um, and again, especially for a kid's phone. Yeah. You know, geez, this is this is pretty impressive oh, stuff. Oh, I got the unified theory. Lane yeah. Is is a a. Um, was actually adver advert before it's time. Uh, okay. Saying, hey, all this stuff is coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. Be ready. Invest now. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. It's all a secret um, pre-ad for the Apple iPhone. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So the uh, with the OS thing and the yeah. ending yep. to be continued. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's uh, also partially sponsored by Coca-Cola because the dudes yeah, do the there we go. drugs. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and obviously the drugs, Pfizer. I there we go. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, I cracked it. I, I mm, yeah. On crack? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lane certainly feels like she's on crack in the next scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, um, ah. This scene like seriously freaked me out the first time I watched it. Um, where Lane's going down the hall and the like oh, yeah, the girl. weird human. Pseudo human creatures come out of the walls yeah. that are, um, and Lane is clearly like having issues. Um, 
Bit of a psychological stress. Bit of a psychological stress. Um, and yeah, then some thing. girl shows up. This is not Chisa. Yeah. Um, no glasses. Um, it appears to be the girl from the train. Train. Yeah. yeah. That was what I, what um, I thought it was. Because because of the the um, uh, her facial expression. Um, and then again, they had to animate, hand animate, the, them passing through, oh, and the girl gracious. passing through her. Boy, that's a horrific moment. Well, the horrific moment was when the dead girl was like, "Yeah." This is like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then you just, I, I wouldn't stand there and let the thing face. No, 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 no. You go, yep. no, no, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, and this is one of the the the, the key indicators that. Lane has been clearly been sort of connecting to these deaths in some way. Um, but now there's a hint that those people are connecting back to her. Mm -hmm. right? Chisa knew her. This girl didn't. But now this girl is connecting back to her again. And there's, there's more of a two-way street than we might otherwise expect. Um, but, oh yeah, that'll, that'll give you some nightmares right there. Um, unlike the rest of the show. Um, uh, and flowers. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so Lane comes home, gets gets, gets, gets computer sh shipment. Um, nothing too remarkable in this, other than the fact that um, there's a um, um, there's a great line of dialogue in here, uh, and I I would love to know why they show you this packing slip, because they show it to you before she signs it, and they show it to you after she signed it. And I don't know why. Because that seems very deliberate for this kind of a show. Right. Um, and you can see, it's so right, right there next to, just to the right of Navi, that's her signature there. Um, and again, I, I don't know what's going on there. At first I thought she didn't sign it because the blank space over here, but that's her signature over on the, on the left under the, uh, that like uh, GXZ code. So again, don't know. I, probably something. Any side by side comparisons to figure out if there's any data that's been changed? I, I pulled it up. Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. As I say, because yeah. it could, you know, again, her in the hallway, mm -hmm. it's, no, it's not Chisa, so it's not a direct connection. Mm -hmm. It's a person that died mm -hmm. somewhere around Lane at the time. Yep. So Lane's sliding further mm -hmm. off the reality train mm -hmm. and. <laughs> not train. Um, mm -hmm. and more into this altered universe is the getting of the new Navi, the more powerful Navi mm -hmm. another step so that mm -hmm. prior to actually physically receiving it does that slip reflect the pre and then afterwards does, you know what I mean, I don't have any mm -hmm. means of being able to compare the two mm -hmm. is there something about that slip after she accepts that computer mm -hmm. that shows another delineation between her move from reality into mm -hmm. the cyber, into the wire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I wonder if there is anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, you're right, because showing it very obviously, there's a point to be made about it. Yeah, and I'm looking at it now, I don't see anything obviously. Right. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, worth digging in at some point. I'm sure there's a website out there that goes into detail about what's going on there. Um, but there is a wonderful moment in here, um, in this thing where the, <laughs> the delivery guy is kind of geeking out over how powerful the computer is. Oh man, I wish I had this computer, uh, my, my computer. And he's, he's so like one of us. He's so one of these, you know, geeky guys who delivers the computer and kind of wants to strike up a conversation about it. Um, and it being Japan, you can strike up a conversation with a 14 year old girl in her foyer and it's not creepy. Um... <laughs> Uh, and she, she's so responsible and knowledgeable <laughs> about it too. Oh, I well, well, don't and, know anything. Oh, um, well, that's okay. exactly because she says, "I don't know anything about it really," and he goes, "You will soon enough." Yeah. Like, oh, 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 yep, sure enough. And your life is going down the. Never mind. Yeah, um, you're gonna get connected. Yeah. Gotta get yourself um, connected. Kind of like your parents connect a way. little bit um, here in the hallway. Um, yeah. 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 MCs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little mind worm for you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. And so, yeah, I think this is getting to the physicality between her parents. 
um, that obviously we Elaine see none of until basically here. Well, and they show none of to anyone else in the family. Yeah. So there's clearly like a bond between the two of them. Um, so passionless. It's weird. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it, they're just standing there, and it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And, which makes me wonder if the mother is just really just another researcher automaton, like mm. Lane. Mm. First version Lane. Yeah. This is the new version. Yeah. She's the professor, and he's the research graduate who's working on his thesis. And they're just having a little moment together before <laughs> they go off and run the Lane program. Okay. Do any of you feel like they are doing shift work? Mm. Like, mm -hmm. like Lane, like Lane comes home, nobody's home, everything's mm -hmm. immaculate, right? Yep. And then there's times where Lane comes home, and either the mother's there or the father's there, but then one of the other shows mm -hmm. up again. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it just yep. feels like, but all the rest of the time it's done. It's it's almost like the mother's punching in the clock, going, "All right, mm -hmm. time to make there. You know, there she is, so, mm -hmm. and then she's gone." Yeah, yeah, because there's no like discussions of like, okay, well, you know, take a bath. I've had a bath. Right. Your father's gonna go next. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, when you go to bed, no. There's mm -hmm. like no any discussion about bedtime. There's no like, hey, going no. off to sleep. See you guys. Good night. Mm -hmm. Use some in the side. No, nothing. No. Like, and granted, there are definitely families like this. Right. It's functional. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um so I, I do wonder if there is an aspect of this show that is like every other anime shows a happy functional family where everybody is nice and gets along. And we're gonna show the other side of you know, that isn't always the case. And, and to be clear, you know, anime has a certain social aspect where anime series are made by adults for, you know, kids and teenagers and so there is a tendency to present as positive of an experience as possible in terms of how people should be um which is not always reality well what about the earth defense force family there exception definitely a strong yeah. exception <laughs> oh yeah they don't exactly have the greatest like put together family but you know I was about to blurt out a line, but that would be a spoiler. Um, <laughs> oh, my. And, it, and it's incredibly sad. Um, but yes. Yeah, no. Um, Let's not be sad about something else. Let's exactly, about yes. Something else. Right. Oh, here we go. Um, and so Lane, you know, really wants your father to work on it. And his glasses start to... And we, we don't see his eyes anymore. When she's like, oh, I, you know, can, can we do it now? Can we hook it up now? He's like all Gendo on Kari. Yep, he goes all Gendo on this. Um, by the way, this is one of the things they fixed. Um, getting these reflections, the glowy reflections, was always mismatched in the original anime. Uh, like they weren't quite on top of the glasses because they were a special optical effect. Um, so if you went back and watched the original ones, they'd be slightly like three pixels to the left or you know whatever and so forth. That's fine. So they had to go back and, and adjust it. There were some shots where it was literally like half on. <laughs> it was really oh. bad. Um, and again, people were like, oh, what does that mean? Like, it's not really connected. No, we just couldn't get like the optical printer working. Um, <laughs> it meant we didn't have the budget. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it so, means what you think yeah. you want it to be. Um, Shut up. <laughs> and here's your evidence um, for this all being a, a, a secret iPhone ad. Copland OS was uh, one of the names for Mac OS. Um, oh, yes. Oh, that, that, that was a, a code name for Mac OS back in the day. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, Lane gets all nice and set up with her new computer um, and her thing. Wow, she has a lot of closets. I just realized that. That's interesting. Um, don't know what that means. Well, when you got a lot of skeletons in your closet. <laughs> exactly, you Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, and so Lane gets, you know, the, the classic problem that so many geeks have that, uh, you know, they're, they have a whole new computer, but a social obligation. Dang it. Oh, terrible. How, how, Do you um, notice when she gets the new computer set up, Lane's mm -hmm. room has lights? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. It's like the lights so on. So it's not just a dark room anymore. Yeah. Huh? Lights going on. It's almost like, you know, a light has been turned on in her life. Yeah. Um, and she's starting to go somewhere. Uh, and so she decides to go out town. <laughs> clubbing in that outfit. Um, <laughs> because that's exactly what we do with 14-year-old girls. Like, where are you going out there? Oh, just clubbing. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. 
Um, okay, keep the ecstasy down a little bit, okay? <laughs> and I love how when she, she's walking around, she's walking past, like, like a drunk guy and, like, a guy and a girl who are, like, leaning up next to a, a thing. It's like, this is not the nice part of town. Um, no. Yeah. But, but she and and I, love the, I love the direction she's getting. Now turn left. Do you see the thing? Uh-huh. Now turn left again. Oh, okay. There it is. It's like... <laughs> I was just like, who does that? Nobody. Does. How do you know where she is? <laughs> well, they don't have Google. Yeah. I know, but yeah. they don't know where Lane is. You don't, inside. You don't, yeah. Oh, we're in the basement. Somehow we know that you're in the corner well, next to the drunk guy. In, in, in fairness, it's probably, you know, I just got out of the, you know, the, the Rapongi East uh, yeah. station. How do I get from there? So, yeah. I just turned left at 3rd Street. Where the hell am I? <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, do you see the two drunk people and the people groping? <laughs> turn, turn right from there and you should see it around the corner. Awesome, mm -hmm. thanks. Uh, and so in she comes, uh, where we get, uh, again... Uh, Along with her eight-year-old friend. <laughs> yeah, we do see Taro here and, and Miu Miu and the rest, um, briefly. Um, before we get the, the scene... Um, so Lane obviously is not enjoying herself, but oh boy. Um, so things start happening real fast, um, as shots ring out, um, and things happen here, um, and the other girls run, Lane doesn't, she's just kind of stuck there. And she's obviously, like, in shock. Yeah. Um, and this is, again, very natural reaction to what's going on, just, just can't really move. Uh, this guy has a gun, uh, which, by the way, is in the game. Yes, we'll get to that later. Um, and he, start, he starts babbling about how he didn't want to do it, he doesn't know what's going on. And then he recognizes Lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And starts talking to her directly. And now our that little tidbit of oh we saw this girl who looked like Lane in Siberia uh, maybe something is actually going on there yeah um, and he wants her to get out of his head um, and to not make him do this not yeah don't make me do this yeah like something's going on really. uh, whereupon Lane walks forward um, uh, and as he is freaking out um, suddenly we see. For the first time, I would argue. Um, yeah, I have there are a bunch of subtitles on this. I have the the, the Spanish was auto selected. Um, for the first time, we see now um, what I will call um, Lane of the Wired. Uh, this is the confident Lane. This is the sure of herself Lane. Um, this is, in some ways. The girl from the club earlier. Yeah. The uh, not Lane we know. Right. Mm -hmm. Lane has shifted into a different personality, clearly. Um, Again, pupils dilated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wide dilated. Very much so. Um, and we should also note that what triggered Lane's freakouts earlier? Death. We've just had two deaths. So there's now the opportunity for whatever this is to actually trigger in lane. Um, and it actually kind of comes to the fore. Um, Rich, here's a question for you. Yeah. We saw her in the hallway with the girl that died by train. Right. And two unknowns that sort of shamble down the hallway oh, right. too that mm. are not distinct people oh. but are definitely okay. people here we have the club murder and there's two dead oh, people, people on the floor yeah um, that was where that was in episode one wasn't it yeah let's find so is out is this the is this the precursor sort of you know like hey yeah. you see this dead person you see Chisa Right. You see this these two know, that things just, that that are not people, but mm -hmm. they are obviously people, and now we see two dead people. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, let's see, um, where do we find the? There's a the hallway scene. One second. 
Um, let's see if we can find out. Um, so there's there's the girl. Um, I am I am playing and trying not to play so Google won't act or YouTube won't actually kill me. There's one. There's two. No, there's two. Fog comes in. Three. That could be him. Yeah. One, hmm. two, three. Yeah. So two dead on the mm. floor, mm -hmm. and then him. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. So she doesn't know who they are because mm -hmm. she hasn't experienced them yet. Right. So she doesn't have a way to form an image of them. Mm -hmm. How she, although I don't know how she could form the girl on the train because she didn't mm. physically see her. Yeah. But she was present at the death, so she, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you could say, mm -hmm. well, there's sort of, maybe she saw a newspaper article, something. Mm -hmm. But these are deaths that are coming. Mm -hmm. So well, she's now linked into that. I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. And I mean, given the fact that he is saying, you know, don't make me do it. Um, is there some part of Lane's consciousness that essentially wants three more deaths? Assigned them to be dead. Exactly. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, okay, him and those two. Th those are going to be the three deaths. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. certainly possible. Um, I just thought it was, it was kind of funky yeah. afterwards when I was thinking about that. I'm like, those... Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. She can't envision what they look like because they haven't died yet. Yeah. Like, right. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, yeah, I like that theory. The um, answer is yes. <laughs> exactly. Your answer is more malt liquor. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, no. Uh, so yeah, um, definitely Lane is in a different spot at this point. Yeah. Um, and then he, yeah, he. Let's see if we get that. There we go. Um, he points the, the, the gun into his mouth. Now, um, that is also a thing that happens in the game. Um, but it's not him holding the gun. I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Um, we will later see a shot of Lane having a gun and holding it to her mouth. And that is a direct reference to the game. And in the game, she pulled the trigger. Yeah. Wow. So one of the reasons why these images are in the anime, I think, is sort of a reference to those who played the game being like, oh, is that going to happen? Like, is that where we're going with this shot? No, no, it's a different direction here. Um, I, 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 I have not played enough of the game to get to those scenes to know how they connect, to be clear. I just know that they exist. Um, wow. But yeah, um, uh, and, and down he goes, and Lane gets spattered with the blood, and it just stands there. Um, to be continued. Uh, so yeah, Present stuff has happened. Day. Present day, <laughs> <laughs> um, And you're right, uh, uh, Fungi Fago, is not exactly um, the same person. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, they're, they're definitely changing some of the character designs around a bit as time goes on. Um, so, like, the girl you see in the, in the hallway looks kind of like the girl, but there are some, like, slight differences to, like, the, the, the outfit and so forth. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, but, yeah. Which it could be a production budget issue. Yeah, or it absolutely. Could be purposeful obfuscation, if you will. Very, very possible. Um, but, yeah, we, we have now gotten some some ways deeper into the mystery of Lane. Um, and we're starting to see some some pieces. I mentioned it on the Discord. Um, this show is a 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzle. If you just pick up different pieces and kind of show them to you, like, here's a piece. Here's another piece. Here's a different I piece. A I, I, I and they're from feeling, all over the place. <laughs> I have a feeling with this analogy that if this is the 1,000-piece puzzle, we're going to get to the very last piece and it's not going to be there. No, picture, actually, picture will never make sense. they're only going to show you like 600 of the pieces. Oh, great. You know, um, but there will be just enough for you to see the pattern and be able to piece it together. Um, but yeah, no, this, this is not going to be the entire uh, it's be the, choose the entire your pattern. own adventure. Yeah. Uh -huh. to page 210. Uh -huh. It's oh, all dementia. <laughs> yeah, dementia. <laughs> 
he got hit in the head with a baseball at a at a baseball right. game and it's all a fevered insanity coma. It's, it's actually a Taijo period and and she's just Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um and wouldn't that just be easy? <laughs> like, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice Double to be able to say, well, you know, it's all for your dream, and so we can all walk away. But, uh, yeah, there is no snow globe in this one. No, no. Lane um, is actually Paprika. Damn it. Yeah. Um, now it makes sense. Uh, you sort might of. argue a sort of millennium <laughs> actress, actually, depending on how. Well, anyway. Um, but, yes. Uh, so, like I said, I, I do have a theory as to what all is happening here, um, which... I will be advocating, um, but there are a lot of other ways of, of looking at this show. Um, so, next question is, um, well, so we haven't really, when you guys got to this point in the show, what did you think was going on? <laughs> if anything. Was, this was my brain. At first the time or the, the show. second time? Wait a minute, which one? Yeah. It was slowing down. Mm. It was like... The yes is turned to no. <laughs> um, no, actually, um, what I didn't have coherent. I didn't have coherent. Yeah. Uh, Parkour report. Anyway, mm-hmm. so when I got to this point in the show, I did, you know, one of the things, again, the slope down going down, mm-hmm. and this is where the beginnings of it, particularly with the mother, showing the mother how emotional she mm-hmm. was, um, or is. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that she's. Again, just like everybody else, this is you know, what I'm thinking. Um, she's a construct and she's learning. Mm. And there's some other components to this. The father is kind of experimenting on her mm. and just seeing you know, how well she's progressing, what she's going to get to, and those kinds of things. Mm. And I think at this point, at this point, I had, I had not really thought about any supernatural mm. connections. Mm-hmm. But then you kind of have to take that into consideration because of what's going on mm-hmm. and, you know, you know, how these people are, are connecting mm-hmm. and, you know, between the worlds and whatnot. And I kept, and that's when, by the end of the second episode is when I had the first thought of, of really concrete of that this is being about being a construct of learning mm-hmm. is, comes from the book, um, Steel Beach hmm. by Barley. Okay. And, um, where it talks about how they're the long story short, there's an artificial intelligence that's learning and he comes to a character and says, Well, I've discovered something and the character goes what and, and the AI goes, I'm depressed and mm. And wow. so at that point that's what popped in my head at the end of my mm-hmm. end of the second. I'm just kinda like going, Okay, is this a construct and the construct is trying to feel, figure out emotions mm. and death is something that mm-hmm. cannot be computed yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep, keeps hitting the wall. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I so love I, that theory. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just a theory. Yeah, that's right. Well, the thing, I think the first time watching it, I just got to the <laughs> second episode. I'm like, I'm going to keep watching this. Yes. That's what I'm gonna <laughs> <do>. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't have any information enough mm-hmm. to cope with this. So I'm just going to keep seeing where this goes. Yeah. And the, you know, the more I think about the artificial construct, the more it makes me think back of the father's doing this stuff. He's got mm-hmm. the computer set up. He's doing a 3D graphic modeler. Mm-hmm. What would happen if the people who are in Lane's world are essentially in a chat room with their avatars mm-hmm. and that they're not dying? Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. logging out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's that they're doing it in different ways. It's, mm-hmm. you know, either dramatic log out or mm-hmm. that, you know, however it happens. Mm-hmm. But, you know, is this an artificial world that Lane mm-hmm. is navigating mm-hmm. that her quote unquote family mm-hmm. is trying to sort of inject a normalcy mm-hmm. into a complete AI construct so that mm-hmm. it's trying to think it has a real life Mm -hmm. and that things are going on like normal and that people who don't want to be in this world are like no i'm noping out of this well you're wrong appear (laughs) (laughs) but it's like the more you know the more i've watched the second time around yeah you know that would be well and Hmm. and that's that's it's that's very interesting because that's clearly the the um um, argument cheese is making 
that she just logged out. You know, she, she still exists. She, she's fine. She, she's still, you know, a, a, a creature. She is just not in physically in the world anymore. Right. Um, she went to the end of her Animal Crossing island and right. into, the, into the lake <laughs> exactly. and drowned because she didn't want to play anymore. And now she's logged out and like, hey, you mm -hmm. should log out too mm -hmm. and come, come, come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love that. The, yeah, John, I had a very similar reaction where I was like, boy, this show like throws a curveball at you every seven minutes. Um, there's something new comes up. There's like, okay. You know, um, well, hence why the first watch through is just like, yeah, now move on to the mm -hmm. next episode. Yeah, no, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and what I liked about this episode too is that by the end of it, you know, um, episode one throws a lot of just kind of weirdness at you. Um, and yes, you do get to see Chisa again and so forth, but you don't know if that's any really happening or if you know, Lane's just imagining it or whatever. Um, because it's this, this weird moment where she's because remember, um, uh, uh, Chisa just knows Lane through just like seeing her in school and, and walking past her. So maybe Lane is just imagining that. Um, this Lane is going out with her friends to Siberia. People are recognizing her in Siberia, and there's 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 some connection to what was going on in the past. So I was like, oh good, the show actually knows what it's doing. <laughs> and the writer is actually connecting these dots in some way. It'll be a long time before we get any sort of coherent connection here, but at least there's something look forward to yeah um and we're only in episode two only in episode <laughs> two, <laughs> two. <laughs> there's a lot more to uh to look at here uh we will definitely dig yes, into more in episode three with ten. psyche yeah Eastern. yeah <laughs> we just through episode two <laughs> yeah we are spending <laughs> twice as long as each episode on that episode Analyzing it uh, because that is what Lane is like. <laughs> we should watch Boogie Pop Phantom. Um, oh God! <laughs> Why would you do this? To me? <laughs> I want to live here. Why do you hate me? Wait a minute. The original one or the remake? The original. Um, I mean, I'm it, at least three episodes in the original. Yeah, I mean, so I'm still confused. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the remake is is great too, by the way. Um, oh boy. Uh, but so for the, uh, not gonna go down that tangent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Taking the high road on this one. Exactly. Um, that would be interesting to talk about. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that will do it for now. So next time we'll come back. We'll start with episode three. Three. Um, and we'll we'll get through what we can. Three and four. Three and four. Yeah, we'll do three and four next week. Um, and granted, I do have slightly fewer notes on three and four, so I think we can get through that in slightly less time, but we'll see. Um, well, I think once you get the groundwork in one yeah. and two, mm -hmm. that it, the, the, some of the things you're thinking either flesh out or yeah, fall flat. True. Right? Mm -hmm. So that as you're taking notes, they get fewer because some of what you thought doesn't prove to be real. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. or at least you you conceptually don't see it. What is real, valid. John? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is real. Is any of this real? Are, are we all? Is it just a fantasy? Um, but we're in the present time. <laughs> present day. day. Present time. <laughs> oh, dear. The, the, the evil Muppet at the, the beginning. Fantasy. Love it. Caught in a landslide. Escape from, from reality. <laughs> and there's probably a queen reference in this show somewhere. Oh, probably. Probably. <laughs> um, all right, that'll do it. We're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes. We'll be back to talk about some more modern anime. The latest anime news. Things that won't make our heads explode. Exactly. Quite as much. Quite as much. <laughs> Quite as much. Oh, no. What'd you find?